um, I'm guessing there's been a few days between the videos. But I'm filming back to back. So it's still a blisteringly hot afternoon. So what I'm doing now, just making a little mark on the end. I'll never get that on the camera, but you can probably just about see it. Because what that next me do is make a notch on each side. Now, this isn't necessarily where the crease is going to go when we get to that bit. What it's doing is it's giving me a center line to be able to judge everything from. Get that white, get the oil off. So it's giving me a center line to be able to work from. I find these sorts of things help me a lot. Um, I know plenty of other armourers are just good at judging this sort of thing. I'm not so good at it. So for the sake of a quick line, scratched him. Now, well, unfortunately, I dropped my scribe on the floor and the point snapped. So it still scratches, but not so well. So I've got is an old file. Just keep hold of that. And for this sort of level of inaccurate scratching, I just pop that in. By the time I get to actually polishing this, these lines will have been smashed out. And what little there is can be buffed away. I've seen some armour in, oh, where is it? Winchester. There's a really nice, um, rough as hell breastplate in Winchester. And you can see where the armourer at some point was smashed in this lightly with a chisel, these marks, to show the centrepiece of the breastplate running up there. By the time he's come to build it, he's completely loused the job and, and it runs off towards the top and um, you can sort of see a slight wave or he's like, oh, I'll see if I can pull it back and rather than do it gently across the length, he's sort of noticed up here and he's just smashed it across. Um, so these centre lines can help with that sort of business. So. Next one, the leg I'm making is going with this poly. Now the wing's not finished yet, it's just roughed in, which is why it's beaten away like that. What I tend to do with um, these is open them up, <clears throat> so when I'm working the mechanism and working this into it, <clears throat> I'm not interfering or being interfered, the movement's not being interfered with by the poly uh, wing, <clears throat> and then I can dress that back nice and tight to the actual movement when I get there worry about that sort of thing when I get to it. Right, so what I've got to do is make sure this is what I'm doing, so this is the left uh, leg, I need to make sure that this is going to be the left, so that means that's inside the groin, that's running down the outside of the leg. What that then means is that this is the inside of my piece, and what I'll do sometimes is hit it with a hammer to mark it, that because now when I'm working on two side by side you don't end up making two lefts and two rights it happens an unbelievable amount of time possibly for all armourers or maybe just for this idiot I don't know now when you look at a quease plate uh, and you can get up to them nice and close in the museum if you were to look at them in profile so side on side profile they're not flat so we'll use our line here actually I'll draw one in that's a bit easier to see mark this back in. So just stick my face in the camera see that can be seen. Yep nice right. So when you see a crease side on or a thigh side on it isn't just ramrod straight. Uh, they've got movement on them, they've got curves and so on. Now I'm going to exaggerate all of this uh, to help with, with it but if you think of the knee, the knee's quite proud. It doesn't go straight here. Obviously that helps with the mechanism, but it also means uh, that your own knee isn't going to get clubbed when it folds into, opens out into that place. Your knees stick out a little bit uh, on your leg. I, I can't quite see the camera here, so my little skinny legs. But the knee is a proud little beastie. Then you've got muscles here, which I can never remember the name of. There's a little dip just there on the leg. Look at that. I have to be careful here or I shall get banned. But there's a tiny little dip just here. 
and we need to make sure that dip is in this material because what it will do is it will give you a sense of security when you're wearing it that you're wearing a decent piece of armour it's not just held up by these straps but it's gripping your leg and so on now my rivet points are going to be vaguely there in the piece of material so that means all of this bit is going to be going into the lames and into the polling so what I want that to do is come up a bit from about there. So that means that dip that we just saw on uh, our wonderful model's leg is going to be taking place, hang on, I'm getting a bit confused there, do -do -do, around here. So about there, or so, is going to be going the opposite way to that. It's going to be going in a little bit. Now these are gentle curves. This is like sort of gently undulating hills in the distance. This isn't peaks and troughs and valleys and all sorts of things like that. Right? But we're just marking it on. So that means, in a minute, because I want this area to be out, we're going to start with the curve in there. So what this will mean is hopefully, I'm going to exaggerate this so we can see it, what our plate will do when we see it side on, grit on the chalk, it's going to come out, dip in, and come out. That bit there will sit nicely with our lames and our polling, expertly drawn, and it will also give extra movement for our lane. It's got somewhere to go. That's just flat. You're interfering with the movement when the leg is straight. There's the belly of the thigh. Now I've curved this, bearing in mind that this is going to go up to about here with the other plates being added. So we don't need to worry too much about that. It's almost flat there. And it just comes down. Now, as I was taught very early on, just because you can do a thing doesn't mean you should. And if you're going to belly this first, this is the way I was shown how to do it, it's great, but don't turn it into a balloon. You don't want to look like you're sort of a Michelin man running around on the field here with these big bubbly legs and so on. Okay, it's, it's smooth, gentle, undulating curves. You know, curves are sexy in armour, shall we say, and these need to be nice and smooth. So, the way I get this, and the way I was shown to get it, is we're going to work this area here first that I've marked, and we're going to work this area here that's been marked. Um, now, you can come straight across, you can start to get into different shapes and curves, you know, a bit more um, movement up here than down here, that sort of thing. You know, you've got to see what time period you're in, what piece you're following. Some of the curves out here are really, really large on some of the original pieces. So you just got to get a feel for that and what your customer is shaped like. There is absolutely no point in making a high gothic wasp waisted thing for a guy with a 42 inch waist. This is not going to happen. You've got to make it more of the sort of Henry VIII style thing to get the, the gist of what I'm saying. You've got to work with your customer. But the armour doesn't need to look bad. Armour on a big guy, armour on a small guy, or lady, whatever, doesn't need to look bad um, on them. There are plenty of examples of original pieces covering very large human beings. Henry VIII was a giant human being. Yet when that armour that we can see in the Royal Armouries is a masterclass in making that sort of armour, making it for guys uh, that size and shape, particularly with all the clothing they were wearing as well in that period, and still not making them look like a Mitchell in there. There is no reason for that to happen. They don't need to look blocky. So, what we do is we're going to get a drop of heat on this because it's not quite hot enough in the workshop at the minute, and we're going to dish this down. Okay, but that's where I want to stop this video because we're just talking about what shapes we're going to get to, and then I'm going to concentrate on hitting it and doing the first parts of that work.